guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. This video is going to be both on my Daughter of Increase Facebook group and on YouTube. Finally diving back into the John Bible study. I want to say the reason why I haven't had any up if you guys are not in the group and only watch on YouTube is because I am having current issues with the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is down, so we're trying to get that up and going again. So I'm actually at the library uh, uploading this video, um, recording it, editing it at home, and then uploading it at the library. And then the camera I was using on my phone was bugging out. I do have a Canon rebel t5i um or 5 5t it's a 5t i think and my fiance let me hold and i'm trying to learn how to use that um i could record on my regular cell phone i just do not like the quality of it so i just choose not to do it that way so i've been having issues with that going live has just not been able to work so we've honestly only done two chapters of john um so i am pre-recording I don't know if it's going to be part one of chapter three. We'll see because it is pretty late right now. It is 106 in the morning and 106 a.m. And my son is sleeping on the bed right next to me. So my goal for this session is to knock out verses one through 21. That's my goal within the next 45 minutes. Um, but yeah, I do want to apologize for not being able to post. If you guys are not in the group, I did let the ladies know why I couldn't post and what was going on. Um, I'm probably going to keep my Twitter up to date because I do have a Twitter and um, Instagram I do use. Uh, so I'll be getting into that. So I just wanted to apologize across the board to all of you guys who have been asking me what's been going on. Um, if you guys don't know here on YouTube, just been a lot going on. Um, so I've basically been re I'm basically going to be recording at home, editing, and then going to the library at least two, three times a week to do blog posts and upload videos and stuff like that just to have it scheduled already um until we get the wi-fi back up within the next few weeks hopefully but um yeah so john chapter three we are going to knock out these two sections um it's really not a lot honestly it's not that long it's only 36 verses but it is late so we'll see what i can get through um you guys don't know this is the esv single column journaling bible here is the little packaging for it from crossway that is the bible that i use um to do my little like online online to do my bible studies here on youtube and in facebook group i chose the esv translation just because it's an easier translation to understand because i do have people who are new believers or who are just getting into studying the word um in depth uh the method that i use is kind of like doing a verse by verse study breaking down looking up words and stuff like that so i do like a combination of verse mapping word studies and um character studies and all that in one um i do go through each step that i do during the process and i'm talking about this because a lot of you guys are new on the youtube channel so thank you guys for joining and some of you are new in the facebook group so i just wanted to um just catch everybody up to date on that um so we've gone through chapters one and two you guys can see all the massive notes yeah notes galore so if you haven't seen those videos definitely check them out <laughs> i do go in depth i do have printables um as well they are on the facebook group i do have a um google drive as well for those of you who are on youtube and don't get on facebook just comment down below if you want the printable notes and i can definitely give you the link to download all of the notes um i even have the notes from the previous studies that i've done with esther and ruth already um but I'm going to get into my utensils and stuff. I just want to pray this in real quick. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that we get to dedicate with you to study, be it morning, noon, night. God, I'm asking that you come into this study and utilize me to be a vessel to share your word with people, to help them understand your word better. God, I'm asking that you just give us a visitation today, be it a spiritual download for myself or a spiritual download for themselves as they're studying and watching this via YouTube, whether it be on Facebook or in um, on YouTube. God, I'm asking that everyone learn something and will be able to apply what we learn to our lives. Amen. Short, sweet, um, to the point prayer. <laughs> 
And I'm sorry this isn't live for you ladies who are in the Facebook group. I am going to try to do a live video next week because I miss my live sessions because we do talk a lot and have fun. But yeah, I have my coffee with me. Here it is. Got my coffee ready. It's French vanilla creamer coffee. Mm. So good. So besides the Bible that I use, I'm probably going to have to move my coffee because I'm lighting a candle right now. And I don't need no accents <laughs> to happen. So let's move my candle a bit. Um, but let me see. I don't know if I could show the candle without causing problems. But like I said, I'm burning the candle right now. Let's move it back over. It's called Ocean Tide. My fiance picked it up in a gift basket for me from um, Marshalls. So check Marshalls because it's a really nice candle. Um, but today's post-it note is going to be this. Never stop looking up from Dollar Tree. Um, <laughs> Dollar Tree post-it notes are really, really coming in handy. That's what these post-it notes are here. These are all Dollar Tree post-it notes. Um, and these are like regular, ooh, regular post-its. This was from Walmart, the emoji post-it. This is a ready tag uh, kind of post-it. And then these are from Target from the dollar spot years ago, as well as this little notepad years ago dollar spot. But um, if you guys are interested in how I put paper in between, um, for the next few chapters, I do have two sheets of paper in between for notes or to put sticky notes, just because I'll, I, I write a lot, as you guys can tell. Um, so I do have a video on that, but I got that video idea from Jason Mayfield here on YouTube. So check out his video and I'll leave a link to my video down below as well. Um, trying to figure out what else to discuss before I zoom in with you guys. Um, let's put this post-it note here. Oh, before I get into that, let's move that to the side. And I'm going to show you guys this puppy here. I don't even know if this is the right side, but, um, so counting the cost on um, counting the cost ministries here on YouTube as well as Instagram is where I follow her from, but she has a YouTube channel now. She has a like a beautiful blue um, version of this, and I was stalking the interwebs <laughs> looking for what she had, and I found it on Amazon. Um, I'll try to find a link down below, um, but it comes in um, a number of different slots. I think it goes the highest is 168 slots. The one I have is the lowest, which is 120. Four, but you get three extra large slots so it's 127 and um this holds just almost just about everything that i need to do my bible journaling bible study scripture writing and stuff so these are like my main utensils i'm going to share with you guys quickly sorry so as you can see <laughs> there are three slots right no four actually okay four slots so this is the front side of it it says shoe liner if you can see that but um I don't think I can open it all the way to share because oh, it's so big you try to get it most of the way in um, I just have this paper clip in here I have my pens in here so I'm gonna be using the micron for today the Micron Archival Ink in the 01, which is a 0.25 millimeter pen. I'm going to be using that. Um, I keep my Papermate Ink Gel, Ink Joy Gel pens in here. These are the 0.7s. Um, I love these. I've been loving these for verse mapping, and I'll do a video on verse mapping soon. Um, I have Sharpie pens as well. I love Sharpie pens. These are the art pens. Um, they're very different from the regular Sharpie pen, which this is a regular Sharpie pen. This is the Sharpie art pen. So it's a little different. Um, but yeah. I use these here, which are the Crayola Twistables. Sorry. These are the Crayola Super Tips. My Sharpie Smear Guard Highlighters. And then I have my Zebra Mild Liners here. And my Crayola Twistables. So those are what I use. So I'm just going to close up this part. And I'm just going to be use, utilizing these, these, and these here for the study. But um, I'm going to have that over to the side so it's not in the way. Sorry about all the movement. I just...
just went to get two pen holders just in case I need them. Um, because, like I said, I do do a lot of writing, note taking, and all of that. So, we should be ready to go. So, I'm going to pause, zoom in for you guys so we can start. Okay, hopefully that is close enough for you all. So, I've prayed in. I've done all that I needed to do. Let me just get the notes open. Alright. And the way that I go about this, for those of you who are new, is I go paragraph by paragraph. Um, so, I will read one paragraph. So, we'll read verses 1 through 8. I'll read it through without any marking, so I won't highlight, I won't underline, none of that. Um, so I'll just read it clean through. The second time I read it through, um, I basically look for words that I want to define, whether it's words that I do know, words that I don't know, just words that I want to define in the original language. And because this is in the New Testament, um, the original language of this text is in Greek. So I would look up these words in the Greek, sometimes the English as well, but I prefer just to look it up in the Greek. Um, and I'll show you guys what I use for that as well. Um, and then once I do that the second time, the third pass through, I then go underline and box things, phrases, um, parts of the verses that really stand out, and then I make my notes. And then I just add color, as you can see here. So, let's start off with, um, verses 1 through 8. And again, this is the ESV translation. I personally love the New King James translation. That's my favorite translation because it's closer to the uh, King James, but ESV is what I use for YouTube. And I may start using a CSV as well. But um, starting off, sorry, I took a sip of my coffee. <laughs> but um, the title says, You Must Be Born Again. And um, chapter 3 is going to be the introduction of Nicode Nicodemus. And um, the infamous for God so loved the world scripture. So let's start it with verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man... How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes, so it is with everyone who oh sorry, so it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. So I read that through as per usual. Got my pen ready. And I'm just trying to get uh all of my needs in order. <laughs> Cause I just have so much stuff all over the place. So sorry about my hand being in the way quickly. Just want to get my utensils locked down and uh, get my screen over here. Uh oh. Alright. Hopefully, this is a good view for you guys. Hopefully, the audio is good, but I will again edit the audio if need be. But so now I'm going to circle words like I said that I wanted to define. So the first word I have is Pharisees. So I'm going to circle that. I have Nicodemus. I have Ruler. Let's look to see what other word that I had. I had Born in Spirit. So Born was in verse 3. Spirit, I believe, is in verse 5. Yes. And then I have flesh, which is six, marble, which is seven, and that was pretty much it for that. So that is when um, I prefer to go in with a post-it. 
um, just because I like to have my definitions on a post-it instead, I don't know, it just seems to work out that way for me sometimes, is like putting my definitions, like disciples behold the names on post-its. And to write on my post-its, I prefer a Sharpie pen or a regular pen, but um, I'm all into like the Sharpie pen right now. So, got my post-it ready. So starting with Pharisees. And I apologize if you guys hear any noise um, outside. I guess it's like the vent system is making noise. So if you hear that, I am sorry. But. Oh my god, sorry. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Let me just bring the camera down just a bit. There we go. Just so you can see more. That's better. Okay, so Pharisees. Basically, a Pharisee is a member of a Jewish religious sect that separates themselves. They're highly zealous for um, their ritual, for ritual and religious purity according to the Mosaic Law. That's what um, Pharisees is. So... member of a Jewish religious sect that separates themselves. They pretty much thought themselves better than everyone else as you could clearly see through the gospels they just thought they knew the word better than jesus did they knew the word better than any other person did um and they were really pretty much hypocrites um the type of people were not supposed to be as christians but some people are so that's pretty much that uh nicodemus so i did look up his name and it's a combination of greek words nico and demas which basically comes out to mean victorious among his people and I think it's quite interesting, um, which I'll get into that actually in a second. So Nicodemus. Did I spell that right? Yes, Nicodemus. Greek word combo of Nico and... Demos meaning victorious among his people and I shorthand a lot um, I'm going to do a video on how I shorthand I did debate in high school for about two years um, so yeah and then I did pre-law in my freshman year of college. So I've pretty much just learned how to shorthand a lot of my work. Um, next word is ruler. Doing these definitions takes time. So luckily I already have them like typed out. So ruler, the Greek word is archeon and it's basically a commander with authority and influence over people in a particular jurisdiction. Diction. And I think what I'm going to do from now on is prior to coming on here, I'm already going to have my definitions written down so that I'm not taking forever. <laughs> so, yes, but um, again, the Greek word, I probably should have picked a bigger post-it for this, Greek word archeon. Meaning a commander with authority and influence over people and a particular jurisdiction. Again, the Greek word is archaeon. It is 
A-R-C-H-O-N, the O has a little accent over it, meaning a commander with authority and influence over, a, over people in a particular jurisdiction. The next word we have is born. So the Greek word is genio, genio. And I'm actually going to show you guys how I use it, how I do this. So I'm going to show you guys in two different ways that I, the two different apps that I use. So on my phone, here's my phone. Um, let me just turn the brightness up a bit. Okay. So on my phone on the main screen, um, I have this church section here, which I have the Bible app, which is um, Uversion, Bible Hub, Blue Letter Bible, and the First Five app. So I'm going to start off by showing you how I use um, Bible Hub. So I'm going to go just click Bible because who cares, right? Um, so this is kind of like how the main page looks on Bible Hub. This is the main page on Bible Hub, whether you're on the website or the app. Um, so what I'm going to do is go at the top. You have these three boxes. I believe on the website there's like four or five boxes at the top, but it's kind of like the same setup. So because we're on John, I'm going to scroll to John. And it's going to go straight to John. It's going to go John 1-1, one, one, right? So then I'm going to go here, and it goes verse by verse. So I'm going to scroll down to chapter 3. And this is in verse 3. So I need to go to verse 3. Now here, you can do parallel um, scriptures. Uh, I don't know what top is. The Strong's is the Strong's Concordance. The Greek is the Greek Concordance, obviously. Um, interlinear commentaries. I'm not sure what top is. I, I don't know. But um, I normally use text analysis, but you can use the interlinear. So just click on the interlinear. I'm going to show you guys both ways to do that. So interlinear, and then what I would do is just look through for, this is still verse 3. So just looking until I find the word born. And here is be born right here. So it says be born. It gives you the Strong's number, which is 1080. The Greek word, the actual way to write it out, Greek. Um, and then like what it is as far as like adjective, but I don't kind of I don't really like the setup of the interlinear on here. So what I would do is go to the top, um, this little box here. Sorry, this little box here. I would click Bible, um, and then I'm gonna scroll. And I mean you're gonna scroll until you see text analysis, and I'll show you guys. Text analysis is what I prefer to use over the interlinear, just because I like the setup. And it gives you the breakdown. So it gives you the strong section, the transliteration, the Greek, or if it's in Hebrew, it would say Hebrew, the English, and then the morpho morphology, morphology, whether it's a verb, conjunction, adjective, all that stuff. So again, I would scroll until I say, see born, and here it is, be born is here. I don't know how to pronounce that, but the number is 1080. So I would click on the 1080, and it would take me to the Greek breakdown of that word. So this is the word that I actually have written down, which is genau, which is to beget, to bring forth. Um, it gives you the original word, part of speech, transliteration, phonetic spelling, short definition, and the longer definition. So give birth to... Um, and then it just goes with word studies, the NAS exhaustive concordance, um, NASB translations. Then it goes into a deeper breakdown of um, the definition of the word depending on the scripture you're in. Or you can just scroll to where it says Strong's exhaustive concordance and get all of the information there. So that's one way to do it. Um, and I'll show you the next way to do it when I get to the next word but I just wanted to quickly show that to you guys because I'm going to do a, a actual video but quick insight for you guys but again the Greek word is genau I think that's how you say it
and it means to beget, to bring forth, give birth to, conceive, And be delivered of. So that's just born. Um, the next word we have is spirit. And I'm actually going to show you how to use Blue Letter Bible with that um, once I write this down. So. The Greek word, I can't pronounce it, is P-N-E-U-M-A, but it basically refers to the regeneration wrought in baptism. And spirit has a lot of definitions, which is why when I'm on Blue Letter Bible or Bible Hub, I make sure that I'm looking at the definition for the context of the specific scripture that I'm on, because one word has multiple meanings, um, and it can mean different things depending on the scripture that you're reading it from. So... When I do my video, it's going to be like really in depth, but um, refers to regeneration wrought in baptism. We have flesh. And I'm sorry, this is taking so long, you guys. Uh, flesh. The Greek word is sarex. S a r x sarx sarx. I don't know. And it's the human nature. And physical form. I'm gonna reread the words uh, in Marvel, which is the last one, which is. Probably shouldn't write that there, but whatever. <laughs> the Greek is I'm gonna tell you guys in a second. Hold on. Okay. So Pharisees, one more time, I'm going to run through. Pharisees um, is a member of a Jewish religious sect that separates themselves. They are highly zealous for ritual and religious purity according to the Mosaic law. That is what a Pharisee is. The next word is Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a combination of Greek words Nico, and Nico is spelled N-I-K-O. So Nico and Demos, or Demos. Um, it is spelled D-E-M-O-S, and the E has a little accent over the top. Um, so it's a Greek combination of those words, meaning victorious among his people. So Nicodemus basically means victorious among his people. Ruler, the Greek word is archion. The spelling of that is A-R-C-H-O with an accent, N. And it means a commander with authority and influence over people in a particular jurisdiction. The next word was born. Born, the Greek word is geno. The spelling of that is G-E-N-N-A-O with an accent over the O. Meaning to beget, to bring forth, give birth to, to conceive, to be delivered of. The next word is spirit. The Greek word is... I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just going to spell it. So the Greek word, the spelling is P-N-E-U-M-A. And it refers to the regeneration wrought in baptism. The lesh, the Greek word is sarx. And the spelling of that is S-A-R-X. The meaning is human nature or physical form. And the final word is marvel. The Greek word for that is Thalmazo, the spelling of that is T-H-T-H-A-U-M-A-Z-O, and the O has an accent, 
and the meaning is to wonder at or to admire. I hope you got that. Again, I will have printables for you guys for this. But um, we know that I like color. So, taking the super tips. Checking on my son because he's making noises. <laughs> taking the super tips, I am just going to coordinate by highlighting. Marking whatever needs to get done. Sorry about the noise. I'm just taking things out. Pharisees gets brown because they're bad. <laughs> I have a golden yellow for ruler. And let's get some more. And the colors never have a specific rhyme or reason. I just like colorful things, honestly, people. Sorry about my arms, I'm just trying to get the highlighters and stuff out. Um, but yeah, my colors never have a real reason to them. They're just there because that's what I pick. Um, it's really all about making it eye-catching to myself. Let me actually get these out as well. Alrighty. Born can be red. And I also like to be able to see my notes easy. Um, so that's why I do it this way. And then spirit is an orange. So now when I look at this, I can automatically know which definition goes with which word instead of looking at the word. I can just look at the colors and know. But um, quickly, I'm going to run through you guys how I use uh, oops, Blue Letter Bible. So here is Blue Letter Bible. Just waiting for it to open. So I'm just waiting for it to load, and I'm going to look up the word, uh, uh, marble, I guess. So, my home screen takes me to whatever the last, uh, book of the Bible I was in, so it was in 1 Peter 1, because I was, um, verse mapping earlier. But I am going to go to John. Chapter 3, I'm going to scroll to 7. I'm going to hit interlinear. And the interlinear is the same thing as the text analysis on Bible Hub. But with this, you actually get the pronunciation of the word. So like I was saying with Marvel, that is the spelling of the word. Let's get the pronunciation. You can click the sound. So there you go. It, the Marvel word, um, the Marvel in Greek is Thaumazo. That's how you pronounce it. But what you would click on is not the English. Don't click on the English. Click on the Strong's number. Literally just tap the Strong's number lightly and it'll open up. And it'll give you the transliteration, the pronunciation, part of speech, root word, um, the etymology, the reference of it. The outline biblical usage and the outline biblical usage is basically the definition of the word biblically. Um, it gives you the translation counts, the strong's definition. So Thalmaze is uh, to wonder by implication, to admire, admire, have an admiration, marvel, and wonder. And it has a bunch of other information as well too. So definitely check them out um, for yourselves. I do like both these apps. I use them both on the internet and on my phone but again we're still on um the first paragraph <laughs> already so now that i got that out the way let's go verse by verse and break it down and this is why i'm always like stuck in a chapter for so long because i do take my time to really break it down and really get into it so starting with the first verse, now there was a man of the Pharisees. Um, I like that part, just that part alone. So I'm going to underline, now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And I'm going to underline a ruler of the Jews. So now there was a man of the Pharisees. I like that part. So I'm going to underline it. I'm going to use blue just because I want to. 
and I'm using all super tips right now just because I like to keep what I'm using similar if that makes sense like the consistency of it um, and basically why I underlined that part was because um, it lets me know that he was a religious man and that the Pharisees were respected teachers of the law so I think that's something key to know about this Nicodemus person um, but that also goes hand in hand with the second part where it says that he was a ruler of the Jews he was one of the Sanhedrin I don't know how to pronounce it um, I'm gonna edit this to put it on the screen but he's basically one of the Jewish ruling councils in the Palestine um, he was knowledgeable and he was an influential man and well educated so it's just telling me a lot about him so now there was a man of the Pharisees that alone I'm going to write my notes um, I guess on the side so what I do when I'm writing on a separate piece of paper um, because this only goes to verse 25 I'm going to take this and just make a squiggly line so that I know it's separating my notes. I just want to separate my notes all together so that I know that that part goes to chapter 2. And then I'm going to write V1. V1 is for verse 1. And what I'm going to write is he was... a religious man. Pharisees, and let me just move this sticky note up there for now. Sticky note is up there with the definitions. Pharisees were respected teachers of law. Teachers of the law, right? So I put verse 1 because that's the first part. So now I'm going to go again and write V1 for the second portion of this. And I can do that just because I marked them in separate colors. So I'll explain to you guys. So I'm just taking the same marker that I used to underline with. And I'm now going to go with... Hmm. I'm going to take this pink one and underline the second portion and use it to mark that and my thought for that is he was one of the Jewish ruling council in Palestine I probably just spelled knowledgeable wrong but who cares <laughs> influential and well educated So there we go. I underlined it in the blue so that I know that this verse 1 portion goes with this verse 1 note and that this pinkish one goes with this note. So that's how I do that when I'm writing on a separate piece of paper or if I'm writing on a post-it note or in a separate journal. I just make my colors to coordinate it with each other so that I can see everything easily because black notes can be overbearing. Um, I do have a cross reference for actually the second portion which is John 7.50. Um, I'm not going to turn to it, but it just basically talks about um, Nicodemus being one of the people, a part of the Jewish ruling council, pretty much, um, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Grab some more coffee. I think I got some food stains from like a few weeks ago. One here. Oops. <laughs> Moving on to verse 2. This man came to Jesus by night. So, this man came to Jesus by night. 
that alone by itself is important because he didn't seek Jesus out um, during the day, but rather in the comfort of the night. Even studies were basically commended at this, so it provided him a chance to talk to Jesus apart from the multitudes. Um, and a second view of this is that because he was a Pharisee, he was a, he could have been afraid of the implications um, of associating openly with Jesus, especially since the Pharisees, the group that he was a part of, this you know Jewish religious sect that you know thought themselves better than everyone, they were seeking to kill Jesus. So um, I mean. It, it, it can go either way, but, um, you know, I don't want to make any, like, assumptions, but if you guys know the gist of the Pharisees, they didn't like Jesus, it would make sense. So, how am I going to write my note? I'm going to put this note here. Let's pick a color. Let's go with peach. My camera may cut off, so I may have to just come back on because I think it only records 45 minutes um, per video. So I'm already at 41.28. I mean, 41 and 30 seconds. So yeah. Uh, comfort of night. Okay, so basically what our chicken scratched <laughs> is that um, he sought Jesus in the comfort of the night when he couldn't be seen and wouldn't be around the multitude. Um, so that's my note for that. And all that I'm going to do is make a line connecting it. Sometimes I draw arrows, sometimes I don't. Today we're going to make an arrow. And then follow suit with the same color so that I can easily connect this thought with that verse. There we go. So moving on to the next part. He says, um, we know that you are a teacher come from God. So he is basically acknowledging that Jesus was sent by God to teach the word. It proves that the Pharisees are aware of who he is um, they just choose to disregard him and the reason why I say the Pharisees is because he says we know well who's this we we know that Nicodemus is a person speaking but this we he's referring to are the Pharisees because he himself is a Pharisees so he's proving that the Pharisees know that um, Jesus is who he is the Son of God who's come to um, speak the word but they're choosing to disregard him so you know, it, it this this proves a lot, and I didn't really get that part until I studied it and was able to like look up a lot of information. Cause normally I would have bypassed this whole "we know that you are a teacher." Honestly, I would have bypassed it. I would not have paid attention to the "we" portion, but that "we" portion is really connected to the Pharisees, and um, the Pharisees are the ones who are seeking to kill Jesus because they feel like he's not the Son of God. But clearly here, they understand who he is. They just choose to disregard it. So I thought that was like something profound to learn. Um, and even then, Nicodemus calls him rabbi. Rabbi is teacher. So it all just is so amazing. So I'm actually going to underline all that. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Let's use green. I love this green. It is so stinking gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous green. This is verse 2. Get your color going. I just think they're pretty. That's a color, pretty color. But, um, so... 
We were first to Pharisees. They acknowledge They acknowledge Jesus but choose to disregard. Right? Yep, choose to disregard. And the scripture I have, the cross reference for that is Matthew 22 and 16. I'm going to make another verse too because I do have another part. But um, again, Matthew's 22 verse 16. So I'm going to open up the YouVersion app. Sorry, YouVersion. You guys can see what time it is. It's 1.51. I've already been on here almost an hour now. <laughs> um, Matthews 22 and 16. I'm going to switch to the ESV translation. Matthew 22:16 And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, "Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinions, for you are not swayed by appearance." So again, that's proof that they are acknowledging him but choosing not to regard him, which is blatant disrespect on so many levels like that's just blatant disrespect to Jesus. Like, good God, these people all right i'm sorry you guys like i haven't even gotten so far so i'm just going to do verses 1 through 15 for today because it's sorry about that you guys i told you my camera would cut off because it only does a certain amount of time but um i'm only gonna get through verses 1 through 15 tonight just because it is late um it's 1 53 in the morning my son is sleeping i don't want to keep going for too long to wake him up and i'm a little tired myself very exhausted and i do want to get up at a decent time to get to the library one time so, uh, yeah, I'm only going to be doing this section here, <laughs> and I guess I can do the next two sections um, during the next live session, prayerfully, but, um, okay, so, the next portion that I'm going to underline is the last part of that verse where he says, for no one can do these things, I'm sorry, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. I'm underlining all of that. I'm going to use yellow for that. Alright, so basically for that, um... Nicodemus was impressed with the work that Jesus did and felt like the signs could only be done by God. Jesus only does the work that God tells him by the power and authority of God. So, um, you know, he's saying for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So obviously he sees that, you know, God has granted Jesus this power and authority to do his work. He's, he, he's witnessing it. So this is his witness, basically. about the work of Christ. I have two cross references, both from Acts. So let's move along to Acts. The first one is Acts 2 and 22. So it says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders, and signs that God did through him in your midst as you yourselves know. And then we have 1038.
which reads how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power he went about doing good and healing all those all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him so I'm going to write Acts 222 and Acts 1038 as my cross references Moving on verse 3. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So I'm going to underline, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I'm taking this gorgeous mint color. It looks like this, the mint Okay, so for that portion, um, being born into this world does not give you access to the king, but through your faith and baptism, you can be born by the spirit to have access. Jesus was referring to a rebirth done only by the Holy Spirit. So, Jesus referring to... A rebirth done only by Holy Spirit. What was the first part that I said? Uh, born into world does not give Access to his kingdom. And I have some other notes for that. So um, the phrase born again literally translates to born from above. Um, this new birth is an act of God whereby eternal life is imparted to the believer and it is a spiritual transformation that opens your eyes to the kingdom of God. So it is nothing that we can do. It's nothing that we're like physically born into. This is a spiritual rebirth that must be done by way of God, through our faith, through Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so it's something that the Trinity has to work with in you. It is a spiritual formation for you to have access to that kingdom. It has nothing to do with being born in the world. And obviously Nicodemus thought that was the case. Um, as we'll continue reading because the Pharisees just thought because they already knew what they knew and that they were born into this that they automatically would have access to this kingdom and that is not the case at all to have access to this kingdom you have to have an act of God where he imparts um, eternal life into you but the only way to get eternal life is by confessing his son Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and by way of baptism via the Holy Spirit in which then God gifts you with eternal life. Like that's your gift. Is if you do those things. So um, I just thought that was profound. I have a bunch of cross references. Like so many. Um, so I'm only going to do a few. I'm going to do Gal uh, sorry, not Galatians. Second Corinthians. And I'm actually flipping to it now. So Second Corinthians. Let's do 3 and 3. And you shall know that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the heart, um, human hearts. Let's do 5 and 17 from Corinthians. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So... To become a new creation, you have to be, what, born again in the spirit, right? Ah, nice. <laughs> so I'm going to write 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 as a scripture. We're going to go to Galatians now. Galatians 6 and 15. Which says, For neither circumcision counts for anything, 
nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And again, you become a new creation by way of the Holy Spirit through Christ, by God giving you eternal life. And then we have First Peter. Um, first Peter, First Peter, I think it's 1 and 3 and verse 23 as well. So 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the Lord, um, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then if you go down to verse 23, it says, Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. So I'm going to put that as a reference. So First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 23. So the two scriptures that I wrote down are 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and then verse 23. You can obviously write down all the scriptures. I'm not going to write them all because I'm, I'm going to run out of space. <laughs> but um, when I do my research, I do extensive research. Okay, so now we're moving on to verse 4. So um, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? I'm going to underline the whole question that he asked. Um, depending on your Bible, you could probably just bracket but I'm just going to underline the whole thing. And since I am now done with those, I'm going to pop out my Sharpies. Yes, yes, let's play with some Sharpies. And uh, I don't want to use orange on top of orange. I have this thing where I can't use two of the same colors so close together. I don't know why. I just feel like it looks prettier when I have like an array of colors. So there we go, we got some blue going. So over here I'm going to put verse 4. And um, my point for that is that Nicodemus looked at this from a worldly standpoint and not from a spiritual viewpoint. He was too in tune with his flesh and not enough with his spirit. This was basically a lack of spiritual insight on his behalf. So I'm just going to put Nicodemus lack of spiritual insight. Because that's basically what it is. Um, you know, Jesus is sitting there talking about being reborn again through the Spirit, through baptism. And he's just thinking like, well, how can a man go back into his mother's womb? If he would have sat and really thought about it spiritually, he could have had an even more deeper discussion with um, Jesus. But he was more of, he was carnal minded. This is one of those things where you're either carnal minded or you're spiritual minded. If he was a spiritual minded person, it would have been a different conversation. But because he was carnal minded, all he could see was um you know how can a man go back into his mother's womb because carnally in our flesh we're birthed through a woman right but spiritually you're birthed through the baptism by way of jesus christ by way of the holy spirit by god so i think if he would have looked at it more on a spiritual standpoint it would have been a different conversation um but i like that jesus was able to break it down for him but, um, the cross reference I have for that is Acts 14 and 22. It says, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Honestly, I don't even remember why I had that written down as a cross reference. So, yeah, I can't think right now. It is late. <laughs> But I do have it written down as a cross-reference. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm, like, really tired. And this coffee is not helping, like, at all. I'm so tired. And my alarm goes off at 6 o'clock. And the library opens up at 9. But I'm going to be there at, like, 10. And I'm taking my son and my two siblings with me. So, it's going to be an interesting day. Um, I'm going to try... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Guys, I'm so sorry ahead of time again. I don't even know if I'm going to finish all of this. I'm probably going to only do verses 1 through 8. Just because I'm so tired. So I apologize ahead of time. But what I am going to do is pre-record the rest of chapter 3. 
um, so that I can edit it and have it uploaded. We will probably go back to live sessions for chapter 4. <laughs> so I'm sorry ladies in the Facebook group who do love the, the uh, live sessions in the group. But I'm probably just going to do pre-recorded sessions for chapter 3 until I get back into the rhythm with everything. So yeah, we're only going to get through verse 8 today. <laughs> But as you guys can see, my process of studying the book of a book of a Bible, a chapter, I can spend literally a month in one chapter just breaking down verse by verse. So you guys are seeing how I do my personal studies. But everything is, I'm basically giving you like everything. But like I normally do like extensive research and have like all 20,000 of my Bibles out and my concordance out and the internet open and just, if you guys can see my face right now. I'm so tired, and I'm sorry that I'm rambling, but I'm exhausted, guys. But, um, yeah, Nicodemus' lack of spiritual insights, um, because he looked at things from a worldly standpoint and not a spiritual standpoint. So, moving on to verse 5. I'm going to underline, truly, truly, I say to you. And... Honestly, the reason why I'm underlining that is because anytime Jesus is getting ready to say something um, and he says, truly, truly, I say to you, even though everything he utters from his mouth is divine, everything that he says out of his mouth is important, it is essential to life. I feel like when he puts truly, truly, I say to you, it is highly important um, to understand it out of everything he says, though everything he says is important. Um, it's kind of like when you're like listening to a teacher in school Obviously everything your teacher is teaching you is going to probably be on a test But you know how sometimes they'll say like pay attention to this because this is specifically going to be on the test That's how I feel it is when Jesus says truly truly I say to you I feel like when he says that it's something that um, you really need to be able to look at And look at it from a spiritual standpoint and not a fleshly standpoint um, so, what I'm going to write over here is verse 5. Um, Jesus is getting ready to say something key. And should be heard spiritually is what I personally get out of it um, because I just feel like that's him saying hey pay attention to what I'm about to say because this is like a you and you need to look at it from a spiritual standpoint and not from a carnal standpoint moving on to the rest of verse 5 where he says, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter um, the kingdom of God. So, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Sorry guys, I just blew up my candle because um, it's getting late and I don't want to forget to blow it out. Because I do have my little guy with me in the room. I'm going to use pink for this, just because I feel like pink has not been on this page yet, like, whatsoever. So, verse 5, yes, verse 5. Um, so again, I underlined, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, they... Um, and when I say they, I'm referring to the Pharisees. They think that you are newly born in the eyes of the law, um, and that they could, you know, bathe in, like, ritual pools to be clean on the outside. However, Jesus was referring to an internal cleansing, which is accomplished only by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God at the moment of salvation. So, um, unless one is born of water and spirit, so water, baptism, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, then, in you basically get the indwelling of the Holy Spirit at that moment of salvation um, and the Holy Spirit begins to do a cleansing within you um, so it's really more of a uh, internal cleansing so 
internal cleansing. I'm writing internal cleansing. Um, which is accomplished by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God and we know that the word is who? Jesus. I mean, we, we talked about this back in um, verse 1 and 1. Um, the word is Jesus back in verse 1 and 1. It says the word is God. That is also a separate being from God because it does not encompass all that God is. And down in verse 3, we also discuss that um, you guys cannot see my notes, but I'm looking at my notes here. <laughs> verse 3, we understand that the word became flesh. That flesh was Jesus. So Jesus is the creator and source of all things. So, again... You cannot do this unless you're doing it through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, through God. So, Word of God. At moments of salvation. And I have a ton of cross-references here. So, let's start with... Uh, let's do Mark 16 and 16. Mark 16, 16 says, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So, Mark 16, 16, I forgot the R, whatever. Sorry guys, my son is moving around and laying in such a weird position. Um, I'm going to go to Ephesians 5 and 26 right now. I'm just going to read it out loud because it is, like I said, getting late. My son is starting to move. So it says that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. There we go. So Ephesians 5, 26. And let's get one more. Um, let's see. I'm going to turn to Titus 3, 5. I might not do that one, though. Let's see. Ah, yep. I'm going to do Titus 3, 5. The printable, again, has all of the cross-references, but for the sake of the video, I don't read them all. Um, but Titus 3, 5 says, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Again, that's that internal cleansing that unless one is born of water and the Spirit, cannot enter the kingdom of God. Just phenomenal, guys. Phenomenal. Alright, so, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So I'm going to underline them in two separate parts. There we go. I'm going to use orange and yellow for that. So that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So without the birth of the spirit, the flesh taints all the works of righteousness. So flesh taints all works of righteousness. Without new birth. of spirit um, and the cross reference I have for that is 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 which I'm going to read that 15 and 50 right now 
it says, I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. So again, that's 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. And then verse 6 down here. My note for that is um, everything that a spirit, everything a spirit-led man does can be pleasing to God. And I just wanted to note that down. It wasn't like something profound from the scripture, but um, I'm not gonna write man. I'm gonna say person because I don't want anyone to feel like I'm being sexist or whatever. <laughs> So, everything a spirit-led person does is pleasing to God. Parentheses, I'm going to put in his will. So, everything a spirit-led person does in God's will is pleasing to him. I wanted to say in his will because someone can go back and try to misconstrue my words and I don't want that to happen. Um... So I have do not marvel, but I only think that I had cross references for that part. If I can quickly get to them, Ecclesiastes 11 and 5. I just want to go to my cross reference real quick and see. Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna move on um, to the last verse for this evening. <laughs> it's gonna be verse 8, and I have four parts for that. So. I'm going to read verse 8. It says, The wind blows where it wishes. So, that's one part. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear its sound. That's the second portion I'm going to underline. Um, you do not know where it comes from or where it goes is the third part that I'm going to underline. And then, so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So I have, the wind blows where it wishes. You hear its sound. You do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So, four different um, parts. And I'm just taking out some colors here. So I can do some uh, underlining. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I have two grains. Lovely. Whatever. So the wind blows where it wishes. You hear its sound. And these are the Crayola twistable colored pencils. Sorry. You do not know where it comes or where it goes and then I'm taking this lime green for the last portion okay so the wind blows where it wishes I'm going to write that on the back that is verse 8 my son is up guys so if you hear me stop that's why I'm gonna move my little in case out of the way so again verse 8 I'm just writing V8 with the highlighter okay so the wind basically cannot be controlled by man right so that's pretty much what it's saying the wind cannot be controlled by man the next part is you hear its sound Oops. Okay. so again verse 8 
right there we go um we can only hear the sounds it produces but cannot take hold of it or even see it we can witness the effects of the sound so um we can only hear the sound It produces but cannot take hold I'm gonna show you guys my notes I know it's probably hard to see it so, but um cannot take hold of it or even see it We can witness the effects of it. Okay. So then you have you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So, um, which is here. And I'm going to write that note here. So basically, we don't understand everything about the wind, but you see its effects. We don't understand the mysteries of nature, so how can one understand the great mysteries? And great is um, capital, capital G because the great mysteries are those mysteries of God. So, um, actually, I'm going to put my note on the back here as well. I'm just going to put all my birth aid notes back here. We don't understand Sorry you guys, I just wanted to move the mic out the way a bit so I have space to write. So um, we don't understand everything about the wind. But we see its effects, which I did state already. We don't understand... The mysteries of nature. So how can we understand the great mysteries? the last part which is the part that says so it is with everyone who is born of the spirit so again verse 8 and this is going to be the last part for this evening like I said I'm going to record the rest of it and have it up for you soon really really soon um, but this last portion again let me show you that part where it says so it is with every everyone who is born of the spirit so before I get to that, so verse 8, um, the first part of that is that we understand that the wind cannot be controlled by man. Okay, so that's one thing. We can't control the wind. The second point is that we can only hear the sounds it produces, thereby we cannot take hold of it or even see it, but we can witness the effects of it. So we can't control it. We can hear the sounds. Um, we can't see it, but we can witness the effects. 
and we don't understand anything about the wind, which means we don't understand the mysteries of the nature of nature. So how can we understand the great mysteries of God, correct? So now when it says that so is so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit cannot be seen or controlled, but we can witness the effects through the apparent proof of his work. Where the Spirit works, there is undeniable and unmistakable evidence. So those first three parts that I underlined really help you to understand the last portion where he says, so it is with everyone who was born of the Spirit. Um, so I'm going to write the Holy Spirit. Cannot be seen. Or controlled but we can witness the effects through appearance proof of his works where the spirit works there is undeniable and unmistakable evidence and I have two cross references for that so the first one is going to be Romans 11 and 33 I'm trying to get to that right now 11 and 33 so I have Romans 11 33 and then I have first Corinthians 2 13 to 16 and I'm going to quickly read that so um, this is Romans 11 33 all the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways um, and then I said first Corinthians yes to 13 to 16 and we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him but we have the mind of Christ so that is it guys <laughs> for today let me zoom out quickly for you okay so yeah we were able to only get through a paragraph um, it is now 2 29 a.m. I don't even remember what time I started this video <laughs> But it's been about an hour and a half, hour. Um, I know I know maybe two hours, two, uh, two hour sessions, but it's, it is late. Um, I definitely could have kept going with 9 through uh, 15. But the next session, I'm going to probably try to get through the rest of chapter 3. Um, again, I apologize for not being able to have videos up on YouTube lately, as well as uh, to the ladies in the Facebook group, because I haven't been able to do live videos. Um, I'm going to get into doing my videos again. Um, I have before, well after this video goes up next week, you're going to see um, my July book haul and you're also going to see next week uh, a plan with me. It's kind of like a sped up plan with me. Um, it took like two hours but I cut the footage down so I think about less than 20 minutes if I'm not mistaken. Um, I also have other videos in my head. And I am going to be starting a series on my testimony soon. I did mention it in the Facebook group. 
um, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it, but it is going to be a series of me sharing my testimonies with you guys. And I'll be discussing things from um, my parents being divorced to uh, depression. I, I battled with really bad depression. Um, from rape, from molestation, um, from being with abusive guys, um, to just a lot of crazy things and crazy choices. Um, a lot of things that God definitely brought me out of, and I don't like, to, I like to share my testimony with strangers, oddly enough, um, more so than I do like sharing them with people that, that I'm close, close with, um, but God is pushing me to share my testimony, so I'm going to be doing that on YouTube, and I do have a IGTV, um, so I'm going to be making videos on there too, but um, I might have a verse mapping video too coming up soon. But again, I apologize. <laughs> my last one apologizing because I know a lot of you guys tell me to stop apologizing because it's no need. I don't know, it's just a habit. But um, it's late, I'm tired, and my little one is asleep. I'm about to get in this bed and go to sleep and um, edit and upload this all tomorrow. Bye, guys.